I went to go watch yesterday the newest film by Danny Boyle, and I kind of have some mixed feelings about it. Just a forewarning that eventually in this review I will get into spoilers, but for the remaining time I will not be going into spoilers, so... Once I do go into spoilers, I'll tell you when to skip to if you want to avoid spoilers. Yesterday is a movie about a man who lives in the UK who does all these gigs of covering songs from the Beatles. This man, however, gets in a freak accident that causes him to bump his head, lose two of his teeth, and the, the rest of the world to not even know who the Beatles are. As a result, he thinks everyone is going insane and realizes that he's the one who's probably gone insane, so he creates the genius idea of writing these songs, performing them, releasing them as his own. And yeah, that's about as much as I can say without getting into spoiler territory, so if you don't want this movie to get spoiled for you, I'd suggest you click to here. I'm about to spoil it. Three, two, one. So in order for me to talk about what I like about this movie and what I dislike about this movie, I'll have to get into some spoiler territory. So to begin with, I need to explain to you all how this event even occurred in the film. But before I get into that, I want to explain the film's quick pacing. By the time he gets ran over by a bus and he loses his mind, that's like the first 15 to 20 minutes. The movie doesn't really give character progression. It tries to make you feel bad for this main character, but by doing that, it's not like his situation. It's just people making fun of him constantly for the way he looks or for what his music sounds like or for the tragedies he's just gone through when it comes to his friends, even his family. Pretty much everyone in this movie treats this character like shit and you don't really have any connection to the characters besides Lily James' character who truly knows his potential in this movie. I love you, Lily James. Please keep acting in more movies. You did great. But that's one of my main problems with this movie besides the ones you're about to hear later that the characters don't really feel like characters they all feel like people to push our main character down like I understand people's lives are like this sometimes but in this movie it takes it to the extreme in the in the point where everyone everyone including his best so-called friends all treat this guy like shit you don't empathize with any of them and you don't care about any of them okay maybe maybe one of the characters at the end but that's it. The best friend character was annoying. The agent, not Lily James, the Kate McKinnon, the other agent, was absolutely cringeworthy every scene she was in. And why was Ed Sheeran in this movie? He, he is the worst part of this movie. He does not know how to act. All he does is put on this douchey performance of, oh, look at me, I'm the best songwriter. About the song, the, the title, Hey Jude. Jude is just, it's a bit old fashioned. That was the kid's name, right? Okay. I guess you're better than me, always being a jealous little mother And especially the parents, they don't even listen to his shit at the beginning of the movie. Stuff keeps interrupting in this really dumb, cringeworthy scene that should have ended way earlier, that lasted on way too long, like we get the joke. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking- Oh, oh, sorry, love, I'll get it. Terry! Uh, Terry! Uh, yeah. Terry! Hey. Um, What's this one called? Uh, leave it be. Let it be. Oh, excellent. Well, rock on, Jack! When I find myself in times of trouble Would you like a drink, Terry? Dad! Excellent! Carry on, Jacko. I'll be back. Hurry it up, darling, you're losing the crowd. Okay. When I find myself in times of trouble Mother Mary comes Hello, love. Christ, this is Let It Be! You're the first people on earth to hear this song! Oh, that will be Marge. Oh, oh she oh, said she was going to come around to us. Wow, that went well. And then later on in the movie, they're like, oh, we were the first ones to hear your song. And the guys are like, yeah, I guess so. Like one thirds of it. Ha 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 ha. Which brings me to my next point. This movie is not that funny. I would like to add real quick that I understand that humor is very subjective. Not everyone finds the same stuff funny and people find enjoyment in different types of humor. I didn't find this movie funny, but the crowd was loving it. What does that mean? Well, it means I didn't like it and the crowd did. So you may find it funny or you may not find it funny. It's that simple. Literally any scene that barely gives a comedic line, the theater was going insane over. One of my biggest problems with this movie was that throughout the entire thing, maybe despite the ending that got me a little by the feels, for the entire movie, I was pretty much just doing this face the whole time. I, I wasn't... I had no expression throughout the entire movie. I, I didn't laugh. Maybe I did a hmm, and that was to a childish Gambino joke. 
Good job for that, I guess. But it really says a lot about your film when you're trying to make this musical type of film and you add all this comedy into it. And I do nothing but this face the entire time. I even counted how many times I had any expression besides this on my face. And I only counted like three or four times, two of which were slight chuckles in some jokes that were, even one of those jokes that I laughed at was really bad, I was just laughing in embarrassment. And the other two were heartfelt moments that really gave me feels. Not like crying, not like tears, just like, oh, that's cute type of thing. I have a weakness for that stuff, leave me alone. Going back to the beginning of the film, how the events even took place, so here's what happened, right? He's riding his bike after he came back from a failed gig, and he gets ran over by a bus because the entire world lost power, like electricity power, for 12 seconds. That's what caused everything in the world to change. Really? I mean, come on, Danny Boyle, you've made great films in the past. I've seen nothing but great films from you. You couldn't think of something a bit more original or not so freaking stupid for the events that take place in this movie? Ugh. It really does get under my skin when a director that's so talented and has so much on his track record that makes decisions in his last movie that just so stupid you think that a director like him would know oh maybe I should make this the reason why everything happens in the movie maybe I shouldn't add this stupid line that might take away from the character a and he this is what he could come up with like if you've seen happy death day or any movie where someone wakes up in a different universe where something doesn't exist or something's a little fishy you've seen this movie I just don't understand why one of my favorite directors of all time can make such stupid decisions in the movie because oh it has to happen in the movie like most of the shit in here doesn't even make sense like there's this one point in the movie where you start realizing that since the Beatles never existed there's quite a bit of bands that didn't exist like Oasis which I thought was pretty funny but then it starts going to like actual items like Coca-Cola never exists which makes like no sense wasn't Coke always sort of a company way before the Beatles Ugh. but the worst part is when he's sitting on a rooftop and he's talking to his best friend and he starts saying oh thank god I gave up smoking cuz I could use a cigarette right now and the friend looks at him and he's like what's a cigarette it's at this very specific moment in the movie that I realized that this movie was gonna be stupid like no I didn't cringe or anything I didn't roll my eyes but if I could go back I probably would at that point I was so like oh god coca-cola doesn't exist that at that point I'm like you know what? Sure, cigarettes don't exist. Part of me wants to go back and rewatch this movie to seek out any Coca-Cola, Harry Potter, which also doesn't exist in this universe, cigarette in the background, Game of Thrones type situation, cause damn it is it so stupid. <sighs> Uh, but yeah, now that I've gotten all my frustration out on this stupid movie, let me now explain the cons. If you haven't guessed, Danny Boyle directed this, so as a result, the film looks beautiful. For the first couple of minutes, it looks like some bland, uninspired, non-Danny Boyle type film that's just showing you what movies these days usually show you without any substance or charm. But then he starts going into his camera angles, then he starts using great lighting for coloring or dark for when scenes need to be dark. It has a purpose, and while the film makes a lot of dumb decisions that can potentially ruin it for the audience member, this film looks pretty. At least your eyes will be enjoying it. The music, obviously the music is great. If you like Beatles, you'll like this. If you don't like Beatles, what's the point in even watching it? What are you doing watching this if you don't like the Beatles? Get out of here. Get out of this world. You don't belong here. And yeah, again, the acting from the main two actors, the guy who gets ran over by the bus, the main character, and Lily James, because they really do have a chemistry. This film's chemistry between these two characters doesn't feel dumb, rushed, or forced. It feels very genuine, and for that, I think it. It gave me a lot of heartfelt moments in certain scenes, and I want to thank Danny Boyle for at least making your on-screen chemistry between these two characters believable. Despite literally filling up most of this review with negatives, somehow I kind of enjoyed the movie. So yeah, I'm gonna give this film a 5 out of 10. Whether you decide to watch it in theaters or not is up to you. I think a lot of people will like this movie more because they will not know what to expect while going into it, and they will be pleased that they heard a Beatles song and that the ending made them cry. I'm giving Yesterday a 5 out of 10. You're the biggest star in the world. As if by magic. 
somehow I'm the only one that remembers the Beatles. These are the greatest songs ever written. People need to hear them. Your music, it's incredible. Yesterday, ready PG-13.